here at the Plant and Animal Genome Conference in San Diego, we're asking how to incorporate sequencing into studying the rice genome. Mike, I understand at the International Rice Research Institute, you've got some very interesting work you're doing. Can you tell me more about the Research Institute? Sure. So ERI is, is based in Los Banos, Philippines, mm -hmm. and we're actually exploring rice diversity and breeding. So we cover the whole range of research from the genetic resources all the way down to the actually breeding new varieties in the field. So a lot of what we do actually involves you know, some of the latest technology to make that process more efficient. So I understand there's about 100 geneticists, and you mentioned about another, what, 900 people working there at the Institute? Right, so we have actually 100 research scientists, yeah. and it ranges from genetics uh, all the way down to agronomy and actually some of the social science as well. So we have quite a, a range of disciplines at Erie working towards rice science. Social sciences. That's right. So there's rice policy and then even economics and trying to decide essentially how to help the smallholder small farmers in the developing countries. Interesting. And as far as the rice in, uh, research that you're doing involving sequencing, what can you tell me about that? That's right. So we use sequencing actually for many different applications. And part of it is you know, whole genome sequencing, trying to explore some of the diversity that exists in rice, but also more towards application. So for plant breeding, we have very large breeding populations, and so we'd like to use that uh, really for genotyping and also discovery. And so you're looking then at tens of genes, hundreds of genes? That's right. So we're interested really in hundreds of genes. So for each trait, we have from yield to stress tolerance, disease resistance, even grain quality, we have you know, dozens of genes for each of those traits. And so in combination, there's actually several hundred genes we're interested in. And then this is across many, many, many different samples, right? Yes, that's right. So in the, in the gene bank alone, we have over 100,000 different rice accessions. And in the breeding programs, every season, they have actually tens of thousands of samples out in the field. That's a lot of samples to keep track of. Yeah, so we've, we have, we've tried to make our, our whole workflow more efficient, actually to, to be able to process thousands of samples in the lab mm -hmm. every year. Yeah, and as far as the laboratory, what can you tell me about that? So I'm actually heading up the genetic services lab at Erie. So what we do is we provide these genotyping services and we also work with the local company for the sequencing using the, the, the ion torrent system. And so we're essentially set up to provide that service both to Erie and our partners as well. I see. And then is this using AmpliSeq technology for... Yes, starters? we just started a, a pilot study with AmpliSeq and we have really very good results from the first, first run. And so what we've done is we've taken 500 informative SNPs across the genome and we're, we've designed the, the AmpliSeq for that. And so now we can actually do uh, the genotyping on sequencing, but we can also uh, use that for more of a discovery tool as well. What kind of results from that pilot can you talk about? So actually in, in my lab, we, we use several different platforms from microarray to different assay-based uh, SNP genotyping platforms. And so we're, what we have is we'd like to compare to see how well is the concordance. So we found really excellent concordance across all three platforms. So AmpliSeq, provided over, in most cases, 99% concordance with all of our other platforms. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you for taking your time today to share with us these great results. Sure, sure.